Hey, what I'm going to show you right now in this video is how to coat an inside angle. Some of you call them corners. I call this a corner and this an angle. So we're going to show you how to do that right after this. All right, now once you've taped an inside angle like this, you generally most always have to coat it. Well, I'm going to show you how I do most of them when I'm doing them by hand. Now you might have seen this tool out here like this and I've tried to use that tool many times thinking maybe it made some sense and I just can't get it to work great but if you want to try it and you can I'm going to put a link in the description down below. The biggest problem is it tends to leave angles or edges like this. That's could be what they did here. The homeowner taped this one. I coated this side. This side still needs coated mainly because of these bad edges as you can see in this picture here. Edges that heavy usually won't hide even under a medium heavy texture. A really heavy one it might but I don't like to take that chance so what we're going to do is coat it and I'm going to show you. Now you could coat it two sides at a time. The problem with that is when you're running your knife down this side and you switch to here, this side tends to gouge out that side so you end up with this gouge down here and you've got to fix that. So if you got the time, just do one side at a time. Now I like to use, we're using a USG Plus 3 lightweight mud. It's really easy to sand, feels good, but most any lightweight mud will work for you. I recommend you don't use the green label all purpose. That's a harder mud to sand. Just really isn't meant for top coating. It will because it is an all purpose, but it's best for taping. Now, as far as a knife, I like a six inch knife. You probably see videos out there where they maybe use a four inch knife. Well, if it was taped and only the mud only went out like three inches, you might be able to do that. I prefer to just go ahead and go that little extra then I can feather it plenty and it doesn't run out on me it just works better for me so give it a try if you haven't now the first thing to do is clean it up there's some stuff in here you could scrape it out like this or you could sand it sanding is going to leave a little dust which sometimes make the mud not want to stick as well so if you can just scrape it do that All right, to coat an angle like that, you want a medium thick mud. This is medium thick because, oops. oops, when your knife is dry, the mud doesn't want to stick. So you got to see me goof up on camera. Yeah, when your knife is dry and you first stick it in there, it'll sometimes fall off like that. So kind of got to get your knife wet before you do what I just did. Now I can show you it's medium thick. You can see it will start drooping here. You don't want too thin or it's just kind of hard to use. You can't put it on as thick as you want, but this is plenty. Now you don't want to use it straight out of the box. If you don't have a mud mixer like us pros do, throw some in your pan, go down to the hardware store or the uh, thrift store first, Pick you up a 99 cent egg beater. You can usually get two of them for a dollar. Chuck that up and drill, stir this up. It will feel like whipped cream compared to straight out of the box, which feels like a dog turd or something. Although I've never tried to coat anything that way, but you get the point. So what I do is I like to load my knife up. If I'm doing this side, I will sometimes load it up heavy on the left side. Since I'm doing the left side, I want it heavy on the left. Well, I don't have quite that same coordination, so I often just do it like this. I just get it out and then cut a little off so it's heavy on the left side. That keeps it from running out so much. Now, it's like coating a lot of things. We put it on here and we just run it down like that. Now, I'm going to give you the slow motion version. What you're trying to do is start out at a little bit steeper angle and as you go down, 
you kind of quickly lay your knife down and that spreads it out like that. Also, you want to keep your knife fairly square in the corner. Now, if you look at this knife, it's a little dirty, but this corner right here is a 90 degree angle and then it rounds out. You want one of these. You don't want them too square or it'll dig into the other side because you want it in here at just about a 90. That way it's cleaning off the stuff that's trying to ooze out that side. So let me see if I can show you. If you, if you do it like that, see how it left a big line of mud right there. Now if I just turn my knife to square it up, I can clean that right off, most of it. If you leave a little bit, you can sand that. So you put it on in a slower motion, just like that. And then you want to feather the edge, which always means tilt and press. And notice how that's tight and clean. Well, that probably didn't get feathered. That's why it had that nasty edge. If you feather it, you want to get that. So now the next step is we just want to do the same thing. If you get one way out there like that, just go over here and clean it off like that one. It's hard to see when I'm standing way off to the side so you guys can see. So I want to be right here. But anyway, get your knife back in here square and you want to lean it over a little more than when you started because when you're floating, you lean your knife closer to the wall and you put a little more pressure. If you put your knife like this and push, it floats. Let me give you a quick demonstration. So we got that. If I put my knife like this and push hard, that's pushing hard. You see it just floats. Now if I stand it up and I don't bend it like that, I just wipe it all off. So that's how you float, as you lean your knife over, push a little bit harder, and just do like this. Uh, if you get something like that, dig out what caused it, and do it again. And there we have a perfectly coated to their angle. I gotta look over here. And again, if you see anything over here, you can just kind of clean it off or you can come back and sand it when it's dry. Like with this square sanding sponge, it'll clean that side off. I want to point out one more thing though. There's another mistake you could make, which is to turn your knife too far because this knife will go way over to here. If you do that, what happens is you round out that inside angle. That's nice and perfectly square. So if you round it out, it won't come out so great. That's about all there is to it. Usually angles, inside angles, only need tape and one coat of mud if you can put it on like this. Well, hey, if you like learning things like this, like how to tape, how to finish, drywall repairs, textures, and more, be sure and click that sub subscribe button down there, that red one. And right afterwards, you'll see a bell pop up. Click that. Then you'll get notified each time we put out a new video. And I will look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care, everybody.